through my career, I've seen wholesale change. About every 30 years, uh, there's a like an evolutionary cycle of how orchards are designed and, and productivity. Productivity's probably moved a little more slowly than the, than the design of orchards because it's created a lot more efficiency for us. So we do this, we, we, get, we get better productivity, but it, we're getting it for a lot less input than, than perhaps historically. So, so there's an efficiency as well as a total output kind of issue. And, um, well, I just think that some of the physiology behind it is is pretty important as well. The the greatest news for us at the moment is that we're only using half of the or just over half of the energy available to grow these crops. So, in a global picture, <laughs> in a yeah. in in a growing region, if we're only using fifty or sixty percent of the seasonal light energy, mm. there's a whole lot more that we can harness to push productivity further. And um, I, yeah. always, I love to say to growers, this is one of the most important resources after w we've got water and we've got sunlight. Yeah. And no one yet has figured out how to charge us for sunlight and no government has figured yeah. out how to tax us for sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only thing that is really free of charge in the agriculture, so yeah. the light. And, uh, and, and I think that everything you say just makes sense, especially because we are trying to increase the light interception of the orchard <coughs> and make them more mm. efficient. You know? yeah. And this is uh, the reason why uh, you have an increase of, uh, of field almost every 10 years, so you, you mm. increase at probably a 10% uh, mm. field in your orchard. So yeah. New Zealand industry has gone from over 30 years, from thir uh, 35 tonne average production mm. to 60. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just you know part of the changing game that we're in. And yeah, One of the things that I see is like over a a 10-year life of the orchard, we might have expected three of those years not to have any production at all. So one of the big changes to me is that we're now expecting and demanding production in year two, and sometimes in some situations a little bit of production in year one, yeah. which lifts the game up considerably. There's um, yeah. just exciting changes there for all of us. Yeah, and, and it's a system in any case that you are developing because um, ev everything we try to do is, uh, is bonded together and especially from the nursery, you are always trying to produce something more performant uh, that start to enter in production in uh, probably, in, like you mentioned, in the first year. Yeah. So if you think about a knit bound tree mm. that uh, sometimes is two years old in the, in the nursery planting. when mm. you plant it, so it can crop in the same year. Mm -hmm. so not a huge amount of fruit, but something that uh, yeah. can help to cover the cost. Yeah. Hmm. And the other thing probably that we have to focus a little bit would be uh, how we handle the increase of the cost hmm. of production probably. But also the other thing that we're focusing on a lot more is the, is the light management within the canopy, not total light, which is also improving our, the yield which we're actually marketing. You know, there was, Previously, 10 years ago, we were just talking about total tonnage, total mm, production, mm, mm. but the language changes now. That we're trying to just, we're trying to grow what the consumer really wants, yeah. and so, and we're trying to lift up that proportion of our crop with all the horticultural knowledge that we have, with the orchard system, yeah. like management, um, and techniques and, and technology to achieve that. And, and fruit are not all the same, so because we know that unfortunately. Some of them are not testing like the other, especially mm -hmm. the one that developed yeah. in shadow area of the tree. So, and dry matter, for example, probably mm. would be a, a very important thing because it's linked to light interception. Mm. More, mm. more light you intercept, more dry mm. matter you are producing. So this would be probably yeah. I think how we <laughs> increase the dry matter inside <laughs> the fruit. So probably it's, a, we, it's the next challenge. <laughs> yeah, I have a few ideas on that as yeah, well, really. Me too. But I think. Uh, that, that that's something that is harder to measure, you know, than, than maybe outputs. But but and it, it does wind me up a bit when I listen to various sort of pressure groups say, "Ah, oh, the fruit that's produced and the vegetables produced today is terrible. They've been bred like crazy, and mm. they've got no nutritional value." The reality is that the fruits that are produced today are more nutritious. They are better tasting, better quality, better texture and more uniform than, than what they ever were. It's a romantic notion to think that that old stuff mm. was really great. It's, it's sort of, um, it's one of the big lies out there, if you like. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we should uh, stand up and be counted for this because 
you know, that it's always some urban perspective that, that comes out and addresses the, you know, the, the great public mass saying about how, how bad modern agriculture is, you know, and modern horticulture. And it's disappointing because um, the reality is that the food has never been safer, it's never been more nutritious, and it's never been such high quality mm. in the fresh fruit space. Yeah. Do you think um, as we move forward in these increases in production and quality that we're doing, you know, we're actually getting much more objective in the field. As scientists, you know, you, you know, you're objective, you know, in the science, you've always done that. But actually as we get closer in the field and the application of that science, we're actually getting more objective, our metrics are becoming more defined and we're getting really more specific, which is helping the performance? Oh, undoubtedly, it's... it's um Farming often is a subjective activity yeah. because you learned how to farm in the old days from your father who yeah. learned from his father. <laughs> now it's, it's on a scientific basis. Yeah. I like to kind of say, well, modern fruit growing um, is going in the right direction, exactly like you're saying. It's mm. more objective, it's more measurement based. We're shifting from being farmers to being engineers. So what I, you know, my vision really is that, um, that everything that we do is measurement based Hmm. And it's numerically based, so it's exactly like an engineer setting up a factory. He programs in the numbers hmm. into the machines and it pops out the gizmos, so. all, all meeting the, the standards and the requirements. And it's nothing unexpected because it's all objectively and measuremently measurement based. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of where we're hoping to get with some of the and, new systems. And this is, uh, is really a, a well taken point because uh, precision farming will be the future. So yeah. Uh, and um, think about the variability. So the next level that we can have to increase our yield and quality will be to do a precision farming inside the orchard because mm -hmm. orchards have variability. Yep. And right now, probably not only probably few growers can take in account to really the variability, but we are speaking about precision pruning, mm. precision nutrition, mm. how we want the fruit, how yeah. many leaves, we need to, to, to have a certain amount of dry matter inside mm. the fruit. So we, we are really driving the, the grower so in, in, and a, in, in, a, in a different way. Of mm. And the variability in an orchard can be easily 50% mm. between. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, yeah. But, the, but the these most modern systems that, that we've been talking about actually have really knocked a big hole in that variability as it used to be. I think, you know, I think we've reduced it a lot. Half the lot. hole, but the hole's still big. The hole is still quite <laughs> big. You know, Stuart, so we, we are speaking about apple, that are probably the most advanced crop that we are cultivating. Yeah. But uh, uh, living here, for example, so I'm still dealing with uh, what I call the dinosaur, the pair that have 80 yep, years right. old, and yes. uh, they got a <laughs> canopy that is huge. So, yeah. so apple is really a... a Pioneer crop, so I can say, yeah, because yeah. everything happened first. Because the, the first the revolution was the rustic, if you yeah. remember. So mm. when the M9 came on, on the game, so it changed completely the, the story. So and uh, yeah, that's right. and all Europe is uh, is going high density planting, and uh, mm. all the world now is doing the following. things yeah. uh, following. Yeah. So, but other crop doesn't have really the genetic uh, available, like the dwarfing rustic, uh, and yeah. uh, not the deep, maybe not yeah. the same, yeah. and yeah, and you know, stone fruit, cherries, apricots, peaches, yeah. nectarines, they're, they're even less so, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm optimistic. I think as we learn more about how we use, you know, the natural growth and architectural traits of, of the cultivar alongside of the, of the um, rootstock effect, I think we are still going to make some big gains, really. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think Definitely. Mm. For cherry, for example, there is some dwarfing rootstock now yes. that are available that are pushing cherry on, on mm. high density planting. So that just uh, 15 years ago was almost impossible to even mm. imagine something like that. So with our new planar cordon system, we, we started setting that up with cherry and we were using colt rootstock, which everyone said, oh, colt, that's terrible, well, it's too vigorous. It, it's not precocious enough, but we change, you know, we modify the architecture of the cultivar and we, we produced two tonnes a hectare of cherries in the second leaf. 
mm. on the rootstock, which is not supposed to flower until it's three or four years old. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff mm. going on that um, that actually that we believe or we think we know, which not until you actually have another serious look at it, that uh, it ma it's made us think very hard about the, you know the sign contribution yeah. to the whole system and, and, yeah, and, and in any case uh, you, you make a point before during the presentation every 30 years you have a sort of, sort of revolution mm. also, or mm. a new rustic or a new yeah. technology and mm. everything is uh, is uh, is re revised uh, mm. according to this new technology yeah that can be a rustic can be a new varieties mm. or can be a different application of uh, yeah. of technique in the field mm. but the underlying um, resources, you know, there's a baseline. We still deal with the same thing. We've only got sunlight, you know, and we're trying to convert sunlight <laughs> into sugars, then into yep. starch, store yeah. it as an apple. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the basics, you know, it's still the same, stay the same. And here we are manipulating, yeah. modifying, yeah. trying to feed the world, trying to move ahead. And, mm. and, yeah. and, and another thing that is uh, really amazing to me that we are speaking about dry matter and everything, mm. but the only two things that you, you make more valuable product is the over color and the size right now. <laughs> not the internal quality. <laughs> yeah, not the internal quality. Ah, but you know the old story, you know, the first apple's bought with the eyes. Oh yeah. The yeah. second and Something after that, that uh, it's bought with the Yeah but you know uh, so probably you <laughs> want to test something. High, well, yeah, high yeah. apples will always have better color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they'll always know that the, the pool of anthocyanins you'll get a, a stronger yeah. color development when the dry matter's up. When the dry yeah. matter's down. Mm. Yeah so this but that when, you know, we talk about, you know, there's, there's a finite amount of energy available to grow the crop in the environment, you know, from the beginning to the end of the season, and we're using half of that. But, uh, you know, some of our recent work has really shown me that there's another big compartment which is possibly almost as influential, and that is actually once you've harnessed the energy, converted it to, you know, growth resources, sugar, uh, we um, end up... Um, how that where that ends up does it go to fruit does it go to fruit growth and the tree can make that Body decision that. yeah and that actually is way more powerful than i would have thought i think there's much to be gained from that yeah as you, you just go into an orchard and you see how many prunings are on the ground how much fruits yeah. thinned off the dry matter and the mm. and the biomass is there and now we go into the modern orchards Hardly and you either. don't see that because we've actually We've transformed that, or, mm. or we've helped the tree, in it, and the conversion so, is so happening into product, more, yeah. productivity. Yes, of course. So, so, so where do you think, you know, you know taking taking the light energy on and the dry matter resource partitioning, at a at a rough stab, suggests to me that even the targets that we have with these new systems approaches that we're looking at, which were sort of around 160 to 200 tons per hectare, I think the real Ultimate is probably up around 250 tons per hectare, more or less. Oh yeah. Um, which 70 is percent is usually what you got inside the, the the fruit. No, so you have to add. Well, we think of... we think we can shift that from. See, if we can shift that proportion of 70 percent of their annual dry matter going to fruit, mm. if we can shift that to 85 or even 90, which sounds a lot. Oh yeah. That's massive. So you're oh, talking yeah. 100, 150 percent increase on what a grower in Washington would say would be a good crop, 80 yeah. crop, mm. you're saying, oh, well, the future might be, and I think we can get there with a bit of application from a, a, a good team, uh, 220, 240? Uh, I mean, everyone will tell us that we're nuts <laughs> and that you guys don't know what you're talking about. Well, no, that'll never happen, you know. But, but we do <laughs> believe 100% is doable, don't we? We no. just think that's in the bag. Or not, you know, yeah. but it's mm. close. Mm. It's the next... Another. There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Stuart can't retire quite yet. Yeah. I, I'm fine <laughs> with the 85. Was, I got to leave. I got to leave good jobs for my, for my young guys and Don't my team. Don't put the bar too high because yeah. after. So yeah. Has, Set uh, the bar really high yeah, because it'll create all these new jobs. Yeah. yeah. Please come. Up. Yeah. Come it's to plant food. We need yeah. more scientists. Yeah, it's great. It's it's a great uh, career. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, so.